Welcome back. This is episode 66 of the Veterinary Business Video Show. In today's show, we'll see how to use a SWOT analysis that can work wonders for your practice. I'll show you where to find a free practice assessment service, and we'll see how to develop a, a positive attitude towards your life and your career. We'll take a look at the UK numbers update for this episode, and I'll offer you my quick business tip for this episode. I'm John Sheridan, and this is the show that helps practice owners, managers, and clinicians just like you to build your successful practice into a great business. Over the years, my advice has been sought about all sorts of management problems in practice. Sometimes it was a financial problem. More often it was a human resource issue involving conflict between members of the practice team or poor morale or motivation. Sometimes the problem was a marketing issue with a decline in client numbers or a slide in the number of customers prepared to accept and implement professional advice. Having identified the symptoms, there's always a danger of rushing into some sort of initiative or treatment designed to alleviate them. It reminds me of my days as a clinician when it was all too easy to use a steroid to control an itchy skin without identifying the cause. What's needed is a comprehensive review of business performance to try and identify the underlying problem. I'm pretty sure that many of you have used a SWOT analysis to identify your practice strengths and weaknesses. The problem is that sometimes a SWOT ends up as a sterile paper exercise which has little or no long-term impact on performance. Here's a clip in which Erica Olson from mystrategicplan.com suggests how to use a SWOT exercise that really will work wonders for your practice. I'm here to tell you that we are going to talk today about how to make a SWOT work for your organization and be useful and not just an exercise in putting together a two by two matrix. All right, so let's get started. Strengths, when we identify them, what do we do with them? We capitalize on them. Weaknesses, we shore them up. Opportunities, we invest in. And threats, we identify. So let's break this down one step further. This is internal. Okay, so these are items that are internal, super important. This, external. The minute we confuse the two, we have a big mess on our hands and the SWAT is no longer useful. So let's address a confusing point. Yes, weaknesses are also opportunities. People don't like that language all the time. So if you don't like the word weakness, call it area of opportunity, okay? But the point is stuff that we can control and stuff that we cannot control but we can impact. Big difference. So we have all this. Normally we have bullet points all over the place. What do we do with it? Well, we want to actually take this information and create a list of ideas that we would then drop into goal statements. Okay, so this is again big pet peeve of mine. We go through this whole exercise of putting a SWOT together and we do nothing with it because we don't know what to do with it. I'm here to tell you and we'll look at how we identify ideas in a moment, list of ideas that then get sort of fleshed out or prioritized and we end up developing goals um, and action items or objectives, whatever the case may be, in your strategic plan. So how do we come up with these ideas? Here's how we do it. We take our strengths and we match them up with opportunities. That's one thing. Another way to generate ideas is to match up weaknesses 